Hey everyone, welcome back to the third and final part to the BF109 uh, build. In the first chapter of this video, I'm going to demonstrate airbrushing white paint. A lot of modelers seem to have issues airbrushing white paint. Several modelers have reached out to me about how to airbrush white paint. In particular, they have issues airbrushing acrylic white paint. I hope to demystify the process for you. The white paint I'm using is Vallejo Model Air White. I'm using a point two millimeter needle nozzle and I mix the paint at a ratio of 60% paint to 40% thinner. The thinner mixture I'm using is one that I created to obtain the best results with Vallejo paints. I cannot stress this enough. If you really want to get great results airbrushing Vallejo Model Air or Vallejo Model Color, use my mixture formula. You will thank me. If you're interested in the thinner mixture formula, please check out my first video. Onto the build. I first airbrush a light coat and then start building up the paint until I'm happy with the look. You never want to go in heavy handed. Just remember to keep the airbrush moving. You don't want the paint to pull up on itself. And if you're worried I'm airbrushing too many layers, the mixture formula will help the paint self level and it will be a smooth finish when I'm done. As you can see, I'm getting really nice results here. Once I finished airbrushing the wingtips and fuselage band in white, I masked off the areas using masking tape and filled in the spaces in between using liquid masking fluid. Now it's time for the black basing. Now there are two ways to go about black basing. The first method is to do it freehand and the second method is to use a template. There are pros and cons to each method of black basing using a template or freehand. Because I wanted to save time, I'm using a template as it makes it so much easier. My paint is thinned at a ratio of 60-40 paint to thinner, and my air pressure is at 20 psi. Now there's no real technique here. Just keep repositioning the template and keep spraying until you are happy. Black basing is really easy technique to give your paint a, work, uh, a vivid look and bring up the monotony in the paintwork and helps add a weathering effect to the model as well. I highly recommend it for World War II aircraft in particular, as a lot of World War II aircraft were single tone camouflage and showed signs of being used. Time now to airbrush the main camouflage colors. Much like how I airbrushed the white paint, I'm going to thin the camo colors at a ratio of 60-40 paint to thinner with my air pressure at 20 psi. There is one difference here. To maintain scale effect, I have added in 10% white to the underside camouflage color 
RML78 light blue. I also did the same thing for the top camouflage color RML79 sand yellow. I always recommend starting the paintwork at the underside of the model first. This way, if something goes wrong, you can recover from the mistake or hide it. It is easier to do that than on if it was on the top side of the model. Another thing to keep in mind, when you are airbrushing over black base, the goal is not to have the black basing completely disappear. So don't go in heavy handed and blast the paint on. Go slow, layer by layer until you're happy with the look. I was very happy with how the camo colors looked after I was done airbrushing, but I wanted to give the model another layer of visual appeal, so I decided to post shade the panel lines. Now I realize post shading panel lines isn't very realistic, but it looks really cool. I had recently picked up uh, several of the uh, new ammo by Make Shaders. I had used these once before and didn't find them to be impressive, but I decided to give them another shot. Well, it turns out my first impression of them was correct after all. They are finicky, they dry very quickly, they do not airbrush well at all, no matter how much I tried. The only good thing was that I was able to wipe off the shaders just using tap water. I then created my own shader mixture using a dark red-brown color and sealed the paintwork with a gloss coat of AK Gauzy Agent. While I cannot recommend the ammo shaders, I give two thumbs up to the AK Gauzy agent, go get a bottle of this stuff. After letting the gauzy agent sit for 20 minutes, yes, just 20 minutes, it was time for the decaling to begin. Overall, this is a really nice kit and the only weakness is really the decals. They're very thick and difficult. I have found the first thing to do with decals like these is to place them in boiling water. I don't mean hot, I mean boiling water. I used a tea kettle to heat up some water and dip the decals for about 10 seconds. My decal setting solution of choice is Mr. Mark Softer. I find it really helps the decals melt into the details and panel lines. As you can see, the decals did conform into the panel lines, but you can tell they are really thick. Once the decaling is done, it's time for another coat of the gauzy agent. This helps protect the decals from the enamel washes, but also helps the decal film blend in and not be visible to the naked eye.
After another 20 minutes of letting the second coat of the Gauzy Agent cure, I started the wash process. I cannot stress how amazing this Gauzy Agent is. Within 15 to 20 minutes, you can begin decaling, you can begin washes, you can do all whatever you need. It really cures that quickly. I used AK Enamel Wash for sand camouflage on the top and AK Enamel Wash for blue camouflage on the bottom. As you can see, they're very easy to apply. But while they're both really nice washes, I honestly cannot tell the difference between the two. Maybe I'm just an uncivilized Neanderthal who doesn't appreciate the subtleties of the washes, but I felt like I was wasting a lot of money for two very similar colors of really, really dark browns. Plus, the smell of enamel washes is starting to really bother me. For future builds, I think I'm going to go back to my bottle of Flory Model Wash. I think after a flat coat, you cannot tell the difference between the Flory Wash or these fancy enamel washes. Time for some weathering using oil paints. I'm going to recreate oil leak slash stains on the underside that were so commonplace on the BF 109s. The 109 engine was not a clean engine by any means. To replicate the stains, I'm going to use burnt sienna and burnt umber. I will dab small bits of oil paint and sweep it with the airflow towards the rear of the airplane. There's no science to this. Just keep adding both colors for visual effect and keep going until you're happy. A key thing to note here is that I have not airbrushed a flat coat yet. If you don't like the effect, you can wipe it away using some terpenoid. If you do oil weathering over a flat coat, you cannot wipe away the oils fully once they have dried. Instead, you will stain the paint, which is also a very nice effect. I really like how the oil stains turned out, but I should mention that all that work that I did here was for the most part hidden after I installed the drop tank. Now it is time for the flat coat. I am using Vallejo's flat varnish. I thin the flat varnish with Vallejo thinner at a ratio of 50-50 and my pressure is at 20 PSI. I do not recommend thinning the flat varnish with my mixture formula. The mixture formula will cause the drying time of the flat varnish to increase significantly. I recommend doing about three light coats of the flat varnish and try to hit the model from different angles so you don't miss a spot as I'm doing in the video. It takes a good 24 hours for the flat varnish to fully cure. If you don't let it fully cure and try to do any other further weathering on it, it will leave a white sticky film. So be careful. I really like that the flash varnish is not a complete dead flat coat. It still lets a little bit of the shine from the paint. 
One thing to note when adding a flat coat to your model, it will unify the paintwork but also darken the results slightly. Now that the flat coat is fully dried, time for some further weathering. I recommend you do the remaining weathering in the following steps. Add in your chipping first, followed by any exhaust or gun exhaust stains, and finally any dirt or dust effects using pigment slash oils. You can also do some paint fading using oil paints or add in a dot filter, but personally, I do not like the look those weathering techniques leave on a model airplane. However, I do love the look of dot filters on armor model kits. So as you can see, I've already added and chipping to one side. I start the chipping process using Vallejo Metal Color Aluminum. I wipe most of the paint off on a paper towel and go in small sections. That is key, go in small sections. If the effect is too bright, you can knock it back slightly using a moist Q-tip. After I'm done chipping using the metallic color, I then use a metallic pencil. Chipping isn't just one solid color effect. There will be areas where there are brighter spots of metal showing and some areas where the paint is just starting to show through. The metallic pencil helps to create the effect of areas of paint just starting to erode. One thing to note, weathering pencils work best on flat coats. Remember to add in some subtle chipping to other parts of the airplane that are either walked on open by maintenance or near the ground and get hit by particles from the prop wash. Time for the exhaust stains. I have to admit the thing I like most about 109s is how insane their exhaust stains work. Plus, it's really fun airbrushing exhaust stains. One of the reasons I had purchased the ammo shaders was to see how good they were at recreating exhaust stains and other types of stains. Unfortunately, as you already know, I did not like them and do not recommend them. So I went back to my old tried and true method of exhaust stains using thin paint, low pressure and several passes for the exhaust stains i'm going to use vallejo model color smoke the vallejo model color smoke is not a gray slash black color like most smoke colors rather it's a reddish brownish black color i really like this color i think it really reflects the engine exhaust well i mix the paint using my thinning formula at a ratio of one to five one part paint to five parts thinner and my air pressure is at 15 PSI using a 0.2 millimeter needle nozzle. Why is the paint so thinned out, you ask? When airbrushing exhaust stains, you want to build up the effect by misting it on rather than painting it on. So I start close to the exhaust location and then move up and away as I follow the airflow of the wing. You want to go slow here and build up the effect using several light passes. And don't worry about being perfect. This is not about being perfect. Exhaust stains are not perfect. Once I'm happy with the effect, I will come in with model air black to tone down the reddish brown in the middle section of the exhaust stain. I use the same thinner ratio and I, as I did with the smoke color and I use the same pressure and the same type of passes. And I have to admit, I'm really happy with how the exhaust stains came out.
time to add in some gun smoke stains. Gun smoke stains are darker in color compared to engine exhaust stains. Thus why I'm not using Vallejo model color smoke here. For gun smoke stains, I start by using black pigments and brush them on. The black pigments give the gun smoke stains a nice effect in my opinion. I then airbrush Vallejo model air black thinned at a ratio of 1 to 5, 1 part paint to 5 parts thinner to add in more streaking effects to the gun smoke stains. The good thing here is if you're not happy with the effects, you can knock back the effects of the pigments and the paint by using a moist Q-tip. However, you must do this immediately. Once the pigments and paint have time to dry, you will not be able to use a Q-tip to knock back the effects. We are at the home stretch. This is the final bit of weathering that I'm going to do on this model. I'm going to add in some dust effects to the tires, wheel wells, and areas where the maintenance crew and pilot walked on the airplane. I'm using dust pigments from ammo for this final weathering part. Because the model has a flat coat already, the pigments will stick to the paint. Just dab in small amounts of dust to the various areas mentioned previously and blow away the excess. If you're going to be handling the model often, I recommend dabbing some pigment fixer over the pigment. Excessive handling will cause the pigments to wipe away completely over time. While this step is not really necessary, and honestly most of the time you won't even see the underside where most of the pigment is residing, hey, at least you will always know the weathering effect is there. Here is the final results. This kit is really nice and easy to build. Once finished, it makes for an impressive display. My only issue with this kit were the decals. If you're going to build this kit, I highly recommend getting aftermarket decals. I want to mention I lost the middle canopy and wingtip lights for the kit. I was not able to locate sprues by the time this video was complete. While I'm not a World War II Luftwaffe modeler, I was asked by one of my subscribers to do an in-depth build of the 109. I truly hope you enjoyed the videos. If you would like me to do a video build of a specific model, please let me know in the comments.